Hello class, um, so it's Thursday, um, so it's the last day for the week, um, there is no school tomorrow, so your test, uh, like I said, will be Monday, um, it will be three questions, um, oh, sorry, uh, four questions, two stationary points and two rates of change. Okay, so we've been reviewing this week, um, we've done two stationary points. Uh, we did one on Monday, one on Tuesday, we did a rate of change yesterday, and we're going to do a rate of change today. Um, or at least a question that involves rate of change. Okay, so here's our question. So, um, probably best for you to go ahead and pause it, and try to work through this on your own, and then go through it with me as I work through it, if you have any questions, or if you just want to check your answers. Okay, so we have an equation of a curve y equals 2 plus 3 over 2x minus 1 for i find the derivative okay so I'm first going to rewrite it so I'm going to write that whole bottom as a negative exponent so that makes it easier to do the derivative I right, derivative 2 is 0 bring down the negative 1 leave what's in parentheses alone subtract 1 and then multiply it by the derivative of the inside so then dy dx is negative 6 2x minus 1 to the negative 2. Okay, so there's my dy dx. Alright, double I, explain why there is no stationary points. Alright, remember stationary point is when the derivative is set equal to 0. So the only time there cannot be a stationary point is when this cannot equal 0. So why exactly can this not um, equal zero? We'll try and solve it out, and you'll see you'll get something that is not true. So to get rid of this square, I'm going to take the square root of each side. That means I get the square root of negative six, two x minus one equals square root of zero, which is zero. And you can pretty much stop right there because you cannot take the square root of a negative number. Even if this was a positive 6. And I multiplied this over, well, anything times 0 is 0, I would have the square root of 6 equals 0. And that's not true either. So, there is no stationary points because this can never equal 0. It just cannot be solved. Okay, triple I. At the point where x equals 2, show that the normal to the curve at p passes through the origin. So basically we just want to find an equation of the line for the normal, and then the origin should be a solution for that equation, so 0, 0. Okay, so first we need to find the equation of the normal. Remember how to find the equation of the normal? Um, you first find the equation, or first find some information about the tangent, the slope of the tangent, and then the normal is the opposite inverse slope. Okay, but the point that the point that we're going to use, because the normal and the tangent pass through the same point, so this is going to work for the tangent also. Now, if we have x, how do we find y? We plug it back into here. So if x is equal to two, y is equal to we got four minus one, which is three and 3 over 3 is 1, so we get 2 plus 1, which is 3. Okay, so that's our point. To find the equation of a line, you need a point and a slope. So where's the slope come from? Okay, so this is a good little refresher back to stationary points. Slope comes from taking the derivative and plugging in a value for the derivative. Well, we have a value for x that we can plug into there. Okay, so when x is 2, y prime is negative 6 divided by, plug in 2, we get 4 minus 1, which is 3, 3 squared, so negative 6 over 9, or negative 2 thirds. So that's for the tangent. Okay, so then the slope for the normal is perpendicular, so that's positive 3 halves. Okay, so now I can come up with the equation for the normal. Let's 
simplify this. 3 halves times negative 2 is negative 3. The 2 is just cancel. Add the 3 over. And we get 0. Oh, wait, should be x right there. Okay. So add 3 to negative 3, we get 0. So we want to show that it passes through the origin, which is point zero zero. So that means if I plugged in that point, if I plug in zero for x and zero for y, it should equal. Well, zero equals anything times zero zero. Okay, so yes, it does pass through the origin. Okay, now our rate of change question. So a point moves along the curve in such a way that the x coordinate is decreasing at a constant rate of point zero. Uh, 0 0.06 units per second. Find the rate of change of the y coordinate. All right, rate of change. So dy dt equals dy dx times dx dt. Okay, one of these is given, one of these uh, we have to find, and one of these is found by taking the derivative of something. All right, so what do we want to find? Find the rate of change of the y coordinate. Rate of change is dt of the y coordinate. So we want to find this. So it means we know these two, or we can find these two relatively easy. All right, so what is this? This is constant rate, so rest rate of the x coordinate. So that's dx dt. So we have that. What about dy dx at the point p? Okay, so remember what point P was? Um, it was from one of the questions above. Point P was 2, 3. Okay, so if we have dy dx, we do that by finding, well, we already did that. So it basically says it'll work for you. So dy dx was this here. Okay, then when we plugged in the value for x, we got... Um, this value for 3. So dy dx when x is equal to 2 is just 3. So the derivative of y with respect to x and then plug in a value for x and we get 3. Okay, so basically all this work was already done for us. That was the point of i and double i. Okay, so then dy dt is just 3 times 0 0.06, which is 0.18. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Um, hopefully you were able to do that on your own. Uh, if not, hopefully me working through it helped you find where you went wrong. If you still have questions and you know what to do, just message me on Teams. Thanks guys, see y'all next week.